Hormones affect your pelvic floor. And this is because when you have hormone deficiency, you can see a reduction in collagen, hyaluronic acid, elastin, and changes in myosin filaments. We talked about those earlier in the section about skin, but it also can affect these changes in your pelvic floor muscle, which means that you'll see decreased muscle strength, increased connective tissue density, and decreased blood flow to those muscles. And this essentially leads to stiff, weak muscles that don't move as well as they used to. If you have weak pelvic floor muscles, this can actually make it harder for you to hold urine in. When you do an activity that increases abdominal pressure, so say, for example, you're lifting something heavy, you're sneezing, you're coughing, you're jumping on a trampoline, these muscles will normally squeeze and stabilize the pelvic floor so that you can keep your urine in, meaning that the urethra has enough pressure to overcome that increased pressure in the bladder so that urine doesn't leak out. But when these muscles are weak, which they can get due to a variety of things like childbirth, pregnancy, standing on your feet a long time, being overweight, neurologic conditions, but hormones can also affect them. And so when they're weak, you can then have leakage or stress urinary incontinence. In this case, hormone therapy has not shown a benefit with stress urinary incontinence, it has shown a benefit with overactive bladder. And this is because there are estrogen receptors in the trigone of the bladder and the urethra. So what overactive bladder is, is urgency, frequency, urgency, urinary incontinence, meaning gotta go, gotta go to the bathroom, gotta go to the bathroom often, sometimes not making it because you leak urine. In patients who have these symptoms, hormone therapy has shown a modest benefit. So in these cases, hormone therapy, particularly vaginal hormone therapy, can be very beneficial. And we'll talk a little bit more about vaginal estrogen before we finish the podcast. So the next thing we're going to talk about is vulvovaginal atrophy. Now, vulvovaginal atrophy, it's a horrible name and it basically describes the changes that occur to the genital organs. It occurs in up to 84% of women, and it can cause symptoms like dryness, irritation, and burning in the vaginal area. It can also cause urinary symptoms, which can include pain with urination, urgency, like gotta go, gotta go, which we just talked about, and recurrent urinary tract infections. So these are just the bane of everyone's existence. Now, let me explain first what happens anatomically. So when you lose estrogen during menopause, you will see changes in your vulvar tissues. And so just as a reminder, your vulva is the entirety of your tissues between your clitoris, your mons, your clitoris, and down the labia majora, minora, the vagina, and down to the anus. And so one thing you may notice is that when you lose estrogen, women will see a resorption and narrowing of the labia minora. So the inner lips will actually resorb and become smaller. And you'll also see thinning of the vaginal epithelium. So this tissue in the vagina itself will become thin and less elastic. The vestibule, which is located between the labia minora and the hymen of the vagina, is a particular part of the body that has very dense sensory nerve endings and has a lot of estrogen and testosterone receptors there. So when estrogen goes down, you can actually have increased sensitivity and pain in that area when provoked or during intercourse. And of course, the vagina itself has a high concentration of, again, estrogen and androgen receptors. And it plays a very important role in blood flow to that area as well as lubrication. So when these receptors are activated, they release nitric oxide. And that increases capillary blood flow to the area and causes vasocongestion. This then causes an increase in pressure or what we call oncotic pressure within the vaginal tissues causing there to be fluid to come out or transudate, which then becomes the lubricant that you see when you have arousal. Now, these changes can cause pain with sex, either because you're not lubricated well enough or because the thinning tissues that you have are really thin and can easily bleed or because of pain in that vestibular area. This is going to shock you, but 40% of postmenopausal women 
who have symptoms of genital urinary syndrome of menopause also complain of pain with sex. Now, you remember when I started this, I told you that up to 80% of menopausal women get this syndrome. So this is a lot of women who are going to have pain with sex after going through menopause. Now, if you'll remember, estrogen can also cause an increase in risk of urinary tract infections. Now, let me explain. This is important because the vagina and the vulva have a microbiome, and this includes bacteria like lactobacillus, and these play a really important role in maintaining vaginal health. There's also, the normal physiologic discharge that vaginas make also contain really important cells that prevent infections, like lymphocytes, neutrophils, macrophages, and these are important immune cells that help prevent infection. So when you lose estrogen, this affects the microbiome. It causes your vaginal pH to go up, and the lactobacillus, which are usually there, decrease, and those are usually protective for UTIs. The other thing that happens is because the tissues are all thinning and getting smaller, the urethra ends up moving closer to the vaginal opening, making it easier for infections to enter the urethra or the P-tube and subsequently get into the bladder. So guys, estrogen vaginally is probably the most effective way to prevent recurrent urinary tract infections. And it is very, very safe. It does not cause risk of cancer, blood clot, stroke, or anything dangerous because it mostly works locally in the tissues. So let's talk about some of the options for vaginal estrogen as well as other options that you can try to address some of these symptoms of genital urinary syndrome of menopause. So as I mentioned, the most effective And the most rigorously studies are low-dose vaginal estrogen in a cream, ring, or tablet, or intravaginal DHEA, or prosterone. These treatments have shown significant benefits and minimal risk, and you don't need to take any progesterone with it, even if you have a uterus. If you don't want to take hormone therapy, you can try over-the-counter vaginal moisturizers, and how these work is they stick to the vaginal mucosa and allow the cells to essentially retain moisture. And they usually need to be applied either daily or up to every three days. Lubricants can also be very, very helpful, and they can be used during sexual activity. I encourage you to check out my video on lubricants on YouTube, but I'll give you a brief summary. You can use water-based lubricants, which are usually cheap, and readily available, you want to essentially choose water-based lubricants that are isoosmolar to the vagina, so they have a pH that is similar to your vaginal pH and have very few ingredients because there can be ingredients in there that can cause sensitivity. They do evaporate, so if you are having sex, you may need to reapply. Silicone-based lubricants last a lot longer, so that can be very nice in terms of they can last longer and they You don't need to reapply them. Most people tolerate them pretty well, and they're a little bit slippery, so you do have to be careful. But if you use them, you want to be careful using them with silicone-based sex aids or sex toys. Oil-based lubricants, there's lots of great ones on the market that are coconut oil-based, whatever your preference is. These last longer than water-based lubricants, but you do not want to use them with condoms because they can actually break down the condom itself. So if you want, I will also link some lubricant options that I really like in the description below so you can check those out. There's also some oral medications that are available called selective estrogen receptor modulators, and these are FDA approved for specifically moderate to severe dyspareunia or pain with intercourse. Now, a lot of you may have heard about laser therapy. So laser therapy is controversial, but studies do show some histologic improvements with the use of vaginal lasers and actually improving tissue thickness. 